Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be solving numerical problems on direct memory mapping. Like I said earlier, problem solving is the only approach using which we can concrete our knowledge base. So with that saying, let's get to learning. Now consider this example number 1. Here main memory size is given as 4 gigabytes, cache size is 1 megabytes, block size is 4 kilobytes and word size is 1 byte. Suppose they are asking us about the PA bit split. They are actually trying to ask us how many bits are going to be there for the physical address and from those physical address, how many will be used for the tag bits, how many are for the line number and the block offset. Also, they are asking us about the tag directory size. We will solve them one after the another. Now, I hope you remember, when the word size is one byte, we call the memory a byte addressable memory. So let's try to solve this. Now the main memory size is given as 4 gigabytes. Now we also have seen the memory is byte addressable. So we need to convert this 4 gigabytes in terms of bytes. Now with the assistance of this chart, we can see 1 byte is 8 bits, 1 kilobyte is 1024 bytes, that is 2 to the power 10 bytes, 1 megabyte is 1024 kilobyte, that is 2 to the power 20 bytes, and 1 gigabyte is similarly 2 to the power 30 bytes. Memorizing this chart will help us solve numerical problems very quickly. So this 4 gigabytes will turn to 2 square that is 4 and gigabytes is going to be 2 to the power 30 bytes which results in 2 to the power 2 plus 30 that is 2 to the power 32 bytes. So this is the size of the main memory in terms of bytes. Now let's figure out the physical address bits. So the number of physical address bits is going to be 2 to the power 32 that is the main memory size in terms of bytes and if we apply log base 2 in front of that, we will be getting the answer as 32. So these 32 bits are going to be used as physical address. Now coming to the block size, it is given as 4 kilobytes. And we already know 4 is 2 to the power 2 that is 2 square multiplied by KB that is 2 to the power 10 bytes which results in 2 to the power 12 bytes. Therefore, the block offset is going to be log base 2 in front of 2 to the power 12, which is nothing but 12 bits. Which means there are 2 to the power 12 addressable memory locations within each block and in order to address them, we will be needing 12 bits. Now let's try to figure out the number of blocks in main memory. In order to do so, we need to divide 2 to the power 32, that is the size of the main memory in terms of bytes, by the size of the block that is 2 to the power 12 that is 2 in bytes so that will result in 2 to the power 20 because 32 minus 12 is nothing but 20 therefore the number of block number bits is going to be log base 2 2 to the power 20 which will give the result as 20 bits so this is the ps split for now that means from 32 bits physical address 12 least significant bits are going to be used as the block offset and 20 bits are going to be used as the block number. Now the cache size is given as 1 megabytes. That is 1 multiplied by megabyte. Now megabyte is or we already have seen as 2 to the power 20 bytes. That means 2 to the power 20 is the size of the cache in terms of bytes. Now let's try to figure out the number of lines inside the cache and in order to do so we will be dividing the size of the cache which is 2 to the power 20 in terms of byte by the block size or the line size which is 2 to the power 20 divided by 2 to the power 12 which results in 2 to the power 8 because 20 minus 12 is nothing but 8. So the number of bits required for the line number is log 2 to the power 8 base 2 which is nothing but 8. So the 8 bits are going to specify the cache line number where that particular block will be mapped onto. Now we are almost there. We only need to figure out the tag number bits to find out the entire PA bit split. So let's try to find out the tag number bits as well. Now the number of tag bits can easily be found out subtracting line number bits and the offset bits from the PA bits which is nothing but 32 minus 8 plus 12 which is 12. So 12 bits are going to be used for the tag number and this is the PA split that we were looking for. Now coming to the second portion of the question that is we need to figure out the size of the tag directory. Now I hope you remember this diagram from our previous discussions. Now the tag directory happens to be a data structure which is used by the processor when the processor needs to find out something from the cache. 
So the tag directory keeps primarily the record of tag bits cached line wise. This means the number of entries in the tag directory is going to be as same as the number of cached lines. Now this is the peer bit split that we acquired just now and from this we will be needing the tag bits information and the line number information in order to find out the tag directory size. Therefore, the number of lines in the cache, we already know it's 2 to the power 8 and number of tag bits is nothing but 12 bits. Therefore, the tag directory size is going to be 2 to the power 8 multiplied by 12 bits. Because there are 2 to the power 8 cache lines are there and therefore, number of entries in the tag directory is also going to be 2 to the power 8. And each entry is going to include 12 bits of tag information. So that results in 3072 bits, which is the answer to our second question. Now consider this example number 2, here the main memory size is given as 256 megabytes, cache size is 512 kilobytes, block size is 256 bytes, and word size is 1 byte. And suppose we are being asked about the number of tag bits. Now let me tell you a very interesting fact regarding direct memory mapping. In direct memory mapping, when we are trying to figure out the number of tag bits, we don't really require these informations. Rather, only having the main memory size and the cache size information will be sufficient. So before solving this question right away, let's understand the significance of tag bits. Now we have already seen direct mapping uses many to one relation and tag bits help us to identify the main memory block residing in the cache line at that particular instance of time. Now let's try to understand how the tag bits are specified. Suppose there are two different main memory blocks mapped onto a single cache line. Now in order to distinguish between these two, we will be needing one bit place. Then again, with four different main memory blocks mapped onto a single cache line, we will be needing two different bit places. And these two are nothing but the tag bits. Now we already know the main memory blocks and the cache lines are equal in size. Therefore, from the ratio of main memory size and the cache size, we will come to know about how many main memory blocks are mapped onto each cache line. Let's try to understand this concept with the help of this illustration. Now as you can see, there are 16 main memory blocks and 4 different cache lines. And the ratio in between these two is nothing but 4. That means, 4 different main memory blocks will be mapped onto each cache line. Therefore, applying a log base 2 with this value, we will be getting to know about the number of required tag bits. Now coming back to our problem, the main memory size was given as 256 megabytes. Therefore, 256 is nothing but 2 to the power 8 and megabyte is nothing but 2 to the power 20 in terms of byte, which results in 2 to the power 28 bytes. Now, the cache size was given as 512 kilobytes, where the 512 is nothing but 2 to the power 9 and kilobyte is 2 to the power 10 in terms of byte, which results in 2 to the power 19 bytes. Therefore, cache size in terms of bytes is 2 to the power 19. Therefore, the number of tag bits is going to be the ratio in between 2 to the power 28 and 2 to the power 19 and we have to apply the log base 2 in front of it, which will eventually result in 9 bits. And that is the number of tag bits we were looking for. Now coming to this example number 3, a byte addressable main memory of size 16 gigabytes is given and the block size is 16 kilobytes and surprisingly the number of tag bits has also been mentioned as 10 bits. And suppose we are being asked about the cache size. Now let's see how to solve it. So the main memory size has been given as 16 gigabytes, which is nothing but 2 to the power 34 bytes. Now how we get that? Because 16 is 2 to the power 4 and gigabyte is 2 to the power 30 in terms of byte, which ends up being 2 to the power 34 in terms of byte. Now we can easily figure out the number of physical address bits, which is nothing but 34. Now the block size is given as 16 kilobytes, which in terms of byte is again 2 to the power 14. Now why is so? Because 16 is 2 to the power 4 and kilobyte we also know as 2 to the power 10 in terms of bytes. So that is 2 to the power 14 bytes. Hence the block offset is 14 bits. That means from the 34 bits physical address, the least significant 14 bits will be used as block or line offset. Now in the question itself, the number of tag bits has been mentioned, therefore we already know from this 34 bits, the tag bits will be 10 bits. Now it will be easier for us to find out the remaining. So in order to find out the line number bits, we have to subtract the tag bits and the offset bits from the entire pair bits, which is nothing but 10. So 10 bits are being used for line number. Now from this line number bits, we can easily figure out how many clients are there in the cache that is 2 to the power 10. 
Now you already know the block size is equal to the line size, hence the line size is also 2 to the power 14 bytes. Therefore, the cache size will be 2 to the power 10 into 2 to the power 14 bytes because 2 to the power 10 lines are there in the cache and each line has the size of 2 to the power 14 bytes, which results in 2 to the power 24 bytes, which is nothing but 16 megabytes and that is the answer that we are looking for because it is the cache size. So that was all for this session. I hope it was useful to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will solve some more important numerical problems on direct memory mapping. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.